of everything of everything dataram dataram the main trainer the main trainer the maintainer the maintainer achintya achintya inconceivable inconceivable rupam rupam whose form ट्रांसडेंटल Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Ravi Prabhu ji, is it possible for you to read the translation? Hare Krishna, Ravi Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna, Madhav ji. Yes, thank you. I will do that. <clears throat> one should meditate upon the supreme person as the one who knows everything, as a who as he who is the oldest, who is the controller, who is smaller than the smallest, who is the maintainer of everything. who is beyond all material conception who is inconceivable and who is always a person he is luminous like the sun and he is transcendental beyond this material nature hari krishna hari krishna we will all uh, read the translation i will read few words kindly repeat after me one should meditate upon the supreme person one should one meditate as the one who knows everything as, as the one who knows everything as he who is the oldest as, as he who, who is the oldest who is the controller who is who the controller who is smaller than the smallest who is smaller than the smallest who is, smaller than the smallest, who is the maintainer of everything Who, who is, is the main of everything who is beyond all material conception who, who is, is beyond all material conceptions who is inconceivable who is inconceivable and who is always a person and, and who is always a person. a person he is luminous like the sun he is luminous like the sun he is transcendental he is transcendental beyond this material nature beyond the material nature hari krishna krishna hari krishna juma prabhu ji is it possible for you to read the first paragraph of the purport and then prahlad can continue after that hari krishna hari krishna the process of thinking of the supreme is mentioned in this verse the foremost point is that he is not impersonal or void one cannot meditate on something impersonal or void that is very difficult the process of thinking of krishna however is very easy and is factually stated here first of all the lord is purusha a person we think of the person rama and the person krishna and whatever one thinks of rama or of krishna what is he like is described in the verse of bhagavad gita the lord is kavi that is he knows past present and future and therefore knows everything is the oldest personality because is the origin of everything everything is born out of him is also the supreme control of the universe and he is the maintainer and instructor of humanity he is smaller than the smallest the living entity is one is 10000 parts of the tip of a hair but the lord is so inconceivable small that he enters into the heart of this particle therefore is called smaller than the smallest as the supreme 
as the supreme, he can enter into the atom and into the heart of the smallest and control him as the super soul. Although so small, he's still pervading and is maintaining everything. Hare Krishna. Bye. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. Yes. Thank you, Juma Prabhuji. Prahlad, is it possible for you to continue? Yes. Uh, by him, all these planetary systems are sustained. We often wonder how these big planets are floating in the air. It is stated here that the Supreme Lord, by his inconceivable energy, is sustaining all these big planets and systems of galaxies. The word achintya, inconceivable, is very significant in this connection. God's energy is beyond our conception beyond our thinking, jurisdiction, and is therefore called inconceivable, achintya. Who can argue with this point? It evades this material world, and yet is beyond it. We cannot comprehend even this material world, which is insignificant compared to the spiritual world. So how can we comprehend what is beyond? Achintya means what, that which is beyond this material world, that which our argument, logic, and philosophical speculation cannot touch, that which is inconceivable. Therefore, intelligent persons avoiding useless arguments and speculation should accept what is stated in the scriptures, like the Vedas, Bhagavad Gita, and Srimad Bhagavatam, and follow the principles they set down. This will lead one to understanding. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for reading that. Okay. So, what do we understand from this text 9? Anybody could start us off, please? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Juma Prabhuji. Okay. We have learned that uh, to be transcendental, it is to recognize that Lord Krishna is the soup is the is in everything in in the earth everywhere within outside everywhere so Bhagavad Gita clearly states that to be transcendental is that to rec to recognize that Lord Krishna is the is in everything and the cause of everything Hare Krishna Hare Krishna thank you very much for your contribution Anybody else would like to? Yes, Richa Mataji. Hi, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, basically, this uh, particular text is uh, talking about how we have to view Lord Krishna. So many people, like I have heard devotees talking about it, like non-devotees, they get so confused. Like when I tell my friends about Lord Krishna, they all ask me, who is Krishna? Is he a person? Is he an energy? Or is he a, just a deity? Or what is it? Has anyone seen him? What he does? Now, this uh, particular text answer all the questions because it's clearly stated that he is a person. But that doesn't mean that we consider him a normal person like us. He is far more beyond our conception, even our understanding, for which in the end it is stated that we shall take the self, uh, like we should take the help of the Vedas, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam to understand Lord Krishna. Understanding Lord Krishna and knowing that Krishna is in every single part, even when we breathe, it's all cause of Krishna. Like he is giving us that opportunity to live again another day when we wake up out of the bed because it's not necessary. So many people pass out in their bed. They don't have any realizations, but we wake up every morning because Krishna is waking us up. Understanding that part that whatever we do and whatever we are seeing is all related to Krishna, connecting it all to Krishna is what will lead us to a transcendental platform. Even if we start just by thinking that whatever I am right now uh, is cause of Krishna, is going to help us reach that transcendental platform slowly by slowly. Because so many people are so ungrateful, they don't understand, and they think that it's all me, I am doing it, me, myself, and I. 
when we start ignoring that me, myself, and I, and putting it in a right way that everything that I'm doing is clearly proved that Krishna is in every single atom of this of this universe. He is the creator. He is originally he has he is the original person, and it is already cleared in the other chapters that we covered before that we are part and parcel of Krishna. It means we are from Krishna and Krishna is beyond. He has he even says in Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, where he is describing his universal form. And even before he has said to Arjuna that I am someone and we all are someone who existed before the existence. We will still keep existing and we will be there even in the future. So Krishna is someone who, ha who has been existing even before our existence. Even right now, he is existing and he will keep existing continuously even when we will not be in the state of our senses or in non-existence. So that is what I learned from this paragraph, that it is very important to accept Krishna as the supreme being in everything. That is why we are told to chant, we are, to, we are told to meditate upon Krishna because Krishna is everything. He is the center of all the universes or anything and anyone. That's what I understand. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Risha Mataji, for uh, an elaborate um, discussion, commentary on this purport. Anybody else would like to contribute or ask questions? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. So um, I'm just I'm going to repeat more or less. In other words, what has already been said. Um, the first thing is he really establishes or informs Arjun he is the supreme person. There should be no doubt about that. And he is the one we should meditate upon. So in a sense, in our current terminology, he is truly God. He's not son of God, but he is God, the original. There's no other God. So that's the first thing. And the other thing is when he says, is smaller than the smallest. Th th that's important because he can enter into the atom and into the heart of the smallest and control him as the super soul. So that's a quality which kind of, um, which we should fully know that he is supreme and he can and can enter into us because he's the smallest of the smallest, besides, of course, the other um, powers and properties he holds. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji, for your contribution. Any more? Any more thoughts? Yes, Chuma Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Yes. So in this paragraph, we can see that Shila Prabhupada is telling us we can't understand Krishna with our with argument, logic, or philosophical speculation because it's beyond our senses. We can't comprehend him. We can't understand him fully. But if we can take shelter towards the scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, we can be able to understand him because it does put a clear description of him. That's my point. Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. And we've been told if you want to know who uh, Lord Krishna is, we should read the Bhagavad Gita. If we wanted to know his activities, then we should read the Bhagavatam. And um, uh, I think it's Nectar of Devotion, which... Um, and Prabhuji can correct me, which uh, shows us how to um, devote ourselves to him. Uh, so that has been referred in the earlier uh, verses that we did. 
Any any more contribution? I think this is a very good uh, text. Uh, and as Richa Mataji pointed it out, it is good that we can use this when, when we are trying to tell others about Lord Krishna and where it is quoted in the Bhagavad Gita 8.9. This is what he has said. And it's amazing uh, how he is even in the smallest of the smallest of the smallest atoms. So he doesn't, he's such a big supreme personality, yet he can be found in the smallest uh, or even in the atom or the electron or the protons or the neutrons. And uh, he can be found in the largest of the largest. Okay, I think Richa Mataji has something more to add on. Yes, Mataji. Hi, Krishna. Uh, actually, what I wanted to add is that this verse actually can even be used to prove Mayavadi people who completely neglect the existence of Krishna and all those commentators and publishers who almost publish their own thoughts according to who they think Krishna is and who they assume Krishna to be. This can actually be a really big um, as an example or evidence how Srila Prabhupada and Krishna, both of us, they're actually giving us the true, uh, we, I, as considering Bhagavad Gita literature, a theoretical description of who exactly Krishna is and what are his powers. So this verse can be a really powerful topic to cover up all the dust that anyone can have related to Krishna or any misunderstanding or conceptions. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Richa Mataji. Yes, I think you have a point there. I've, I'm just reading the, the meaning of the word achintya, means which is beyond this material world. So he is also present in this material world, in each and every atom, in each and every one of us, in each and every living things. But he's also beyond. So that, I think, is very difficult for Mayavadis or non-devotees to understand. That not only is his presence felt in this material world, but he's beyond the material world. Hare Krishna, any more contribution before we hand over to Avinash Prabhuji? Hare Krishna, one more point I just wanted to add that um, he is of course beyond the material nature for a reason where um, I think in before chapters he is saying that I am the creator of the material nature. He is the one who has created Maya and Maya is a, another form of energy of Krishna. So Krishna is beyond all the energies because all the energies indirectly or directly they come from him nothing is uh, nothing is like krishna is from them it's like everything is from krishna so it clearly proves that material nature and the spiritual world everything is cause of him and he is beyond all of these hari krishna hari krishna thank you thank you very much any more addition we haven't heard from the youngest member Prahlad. I don't know what happened to Prahlad. Prahlad usually gives us the full, um, um, actually, the class, actually. So Prahlad, um, any, any, any sort of uh, realization, Prahlad? I didn't want to take up much of people's points because I could <laughs> see that Vishnu Mataji was giving very nice points. So I, I, I have very little to say here because this... Um, this purport and this translation give me very shallow knowledge. But from what I've understood is that this is a very key thing when we were like, it, 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 for me, I feel like this, this goes to show that you need to read the whole Bhagavad Gita before you start practicing, you know, the yoga system or, or at least trying to 
uh, go on to your path of Krishna consciousness, you, you have to finish the Bhagavad Gita at least. Because here we are being given very key information on how we are supposed to perform meditation and do all that. So we are supposed to, you know, focus on the Supreme himself. And, and you know, like here we're being told about how we can think about the Supreme Lord himself every now and then, you know, every single minute. So we're told here that we're not supposed to think or even, in my point of view, meditate on the Supreme, like, like as though he's something impersonal or void. Like in the previous chapters, we had spoken about something known as the void, whereby some people doing false yoga, they will end up, you know, believing in this fact that there is a void when here we are being told in the scriptures that there is no such thing as the void. There's no such thing as empty nothingness full of darkness. There's no such thing as the void. So we're not supposed to think of him as the void, but rather we're supposed to think of him, you know, like since we are not able to comprehend or understand how he, he functions fully or how he's supposed to look or how he's not supposed to look because we're told here yeah, that he's the smallest of the smallest and, you know, he's... He is luminous like the sun. And, uh, you know, his, his majority of the descriptions that we may have, majority of the similes, metaphors that we may have right now, he could be, you know, the, the most intelligent than, than everyone. He could be as well the most cunning. The point is he, is, he is everything. So it's so hard for our brain to comprehend how he is. But we have a shallow understanding of how he functions. He is the truth. He will continue living on. He's not like, like us, whereby we have short lives. And then we, they, they, there comes the demigods. They too have their, their end times. Like I, I read this, um, this, this book. It was full of nice artworks. It also states that Brahma himself, he has, he has an end time, but after billions of years. So him, he's different. He's on a state of his own whereby he's not affected by anything that, that we may be affected with or that the demigods may be affected with. He, he is on his own. And at the same time on being on his own platform, he is still in our, in our material world at the same time. So it's hard to understand or even hard to explain to somebody how this works. It's like you go up to a person and you tell them how the fourth dimension works like you tell them it's a cube within a cube and the cube inside the cube is growing and the other cube is becoming smaller and it goes on so on so forth like a chain. No one will understand that. But we are told here in the Bhagavad Gita in the simplest way, the, the Supreme Lord is the truth. He's the cause of all causes. He's the creator of, of the super soul. He's the one who, who, who sort of, he, he's the one who enables us to get whatever we want out of our desires. Like you'll see everything that we want, Krishna will give it to you. Regardless, it, it may not be immediate, but it will still be there. It will still come. It will still end up coming. Like now, you, a very good example that we have been having now, now these days, when we have this determination and desire to serve him, and we still want to serve him, and we want to we we want to go to to the to, to back to Godhead, you know, with him, him himself. We have that desire that we want to continue. So you may find out that we won't get it in a first lifetime, but we'll get it after many births and deaths. Like who knows, maybe us reading the Bhagavad Gita, maybe previously we must have joined ISKCON movement. And then, you know, or, or, or must have heard about the, this, this movement of, of Krishna consciousness, the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. And we must have felt interested to it, but we may have not had the time to practice it fully or even to, to, to try and exercise the resources that we, 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 we could have had. Like maybe we, we could have read all these scriptures, but then probably by that time, they could have not been printed or maybe they were printed, but we could not get them 
you know, we were not able to get them. So this interest is what may have drawn us in this second lifetime that we have come back and now finally we are reading the scripture. It's what we wanted in our previous birth. So now let's say you want to chant more rounds in this birth, but you know, you're not able to. Next birth you will come and, and you will do it. You'll do it. You'll be able to do it. Same thing again. If you're not able to do all three, reading the scriptures, chanting and, and doing kirtan, you'll find slowly by slowly you'll end up doing all this, all these three. And once you reach that point, after that last lifetime on this material planet, whereby we are always clouded by these, by, by these material objects and other things that may influence our mind, we will find out that after that very final last birth, we will find ourselves back to Godhead and back with the truth, the supreme truth himself and the cause of all causes. And that is the Supreme Lord Krishna. So, and um, now, you know, we are, we are told here that, finally, we are told here that, you know, like, um, like we, we may be intelligent here, but still, even though we are intelligent here, our knowledge in this material world is still not enough or sufficient to comprehend or understand how this, um, how, how uh, the Supreme Lord works and how he is and how he looks, you know, how he behaves. Our knowledge is not able to tap into that or, or even to, to catch a glimpse of that. Because every time we try to do that, you will find out some people will end up still going on to the fact that this must have been a supreme being that may have come onto this planet, you know, taught us and then gone back to their other planet. But it's, it's not the case. It's very hard to comprehend that because, you know, we, we still perceive that he's probably a person who must have come to our planet. But no, he is still here. He's a truth, you know, he's the truth. And he's like the atom, you know, he's like, he's, okay, well, not exactly like the atom, but he's smaller or he could even be smaller than the atom. We are told here that, uh, that uh, we, we uh, wait, hold on. Yeah, we are told that here the living entity, because I believe there was this text that I read somewhere that the soul itself is 10,000 parts of a tip of, of the hair. So, you know, it's literally impossible to cut your hair like a hundred times or even a thousand times and say that that is the size of your soul. So that small, that, that size, we're told that the Lord himself is even smaller than that. And he comes and he takes, and you know, he tries to, he, he, he maintains, he tries to maintain everything. He tries also to lead us to the correct path wherever we're on. Like you'll find out whenever there comes a case whereby we are chosen to say whether this is good or bad. Now, there'll be something telling us that this is bad. Don't do it. And there's another thing that will tell us, no, this is good. You must enjoy. Like, let's say if, if you go to, if, if you're invited with your friends to go to a club, there'll be that thing that's leading you back saying, no, don't go. It's bad. Your parents will not like it. It's, it's very bad. And then there's that other part that says, no, go. Enjoy. Live life. You have a very short life. So he tries to, to make us go in the right path so that we go back to him because he himself wants us to go back to him. He doesn't want us to suffer here in this material platform. And, uh, you know, we, we may not have knowledge on how he works or how he is. So we are told here that these are very simple instructions. You must, you must accept what is stated in the scriptures, like the Vedas, Bhagavad Gita, and Srimad Bhagavatam, and follow the principles they set down. This will lead one to understanding. Us, by the time we had tried to start in this, in this class, I bet you most of us, we didn't know that the Supreme Lord is like this and that is the truth. Like I'll admit, I myself, I didn't know all this information, but when we started, now you, you realize, you start realizing and getting that form of understanding. And we are lucky that before us, we had a person 
like Srila Prabhupada, who create who, who made these purports so that we can understand even more. It gives us more information on how how it is. So that makes it easier to follow what the Vedas, Bhagavad Gita, and Srimad Bhagavatam have for us. Yes? It's very easy because Prabhupada, let's say there may be a principle stated right here in the translation and we, we may not understand it. The purport is there to give firm, further information. So this clears our doubt even more. And when we have groups like this whereby devotees exchange and also we, we have mentors, we have yeah, we, we have mentors who, who teach us and give us more information. Our doubts slowly by slowly clear off, you know, and, and we don't start to doubt the scriptures or, or anything. It's only when we fall out of line, yes, when we fall out of line, that is when we start doubting the scriptures, when we don't consult someone who is fully knowledgeable in them or who at least has better knowledge than us, you know. That is when we fall out of line, and that is when we go into more doubt. You know, we lead into an entanglement of doubt. Like, I can give you an example. Let's say underneath your bed, dust is everywhere, yes. But if you don't sweep your bed, yes, the dust comes and clumps up. So that can happen. If we do not consult, our consulting to, towards other people who have more information on such things, like, for example, we have Avinash Prabhu who, who gives us good acronyms and tries to help us. We have, we, have, uh, uh, we have Madan Gopal Prabhu, we have Rukma Prabhu. You know, we have all these. We have Madan Gopal Prabhu. They are the ones who are helping us clean this dust before it clumps up into doubts. So if we do not constantly, it's good to ask questions whenever we have doubt, you know, just to clear that dust away before it clumps up. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Hare Krishna, thank you very much for that. I liked your analogy of the dust and our gurus helping us sweep it. And I also liked your point on being um, uh, as a part of encouragement that in case if you haven't been able to uh, do various things this birth, you start thinking about it, start expressing that you would like to do it, you would like to do it. And if not in this birth, at least next birth, you will start. So I really liked that encouragement. Thank you, Pralath. And Richa Mataji, your hand is up. What is, uh, can you please tell us? Uh, hi, Krishna. The one point that I wanted to mention is that so many people, if they read this verse and try to have their own mindset, they might start blaming God for everything because it says that Sri Krishna is everything. So this is one of the main points someone should uh, uh, like understand that if anything bad is happening in their life, he should remember that Lord Krishna gives him all his individuality and the power to make his own decisions. Sri Krishna is there to get you out of the problems, but sometimes you are put in a problem to learn some lessons so that you can understand the importance of Sri Krishna in your life at that point blaming uh, Sri Krishna for all those bad actions and reactions that you go through because of your karma will be so pointless and it will be misunderstanding of the purpose so I just wanted to mention that point Hare Krishna Hare Krishna thank you very much Richa Mataji yes he is very merciful and he's very kind he there is no way he is there to punish us but like how they say a potter, when he uh, makes a pot, he's constantly hitting the pot. So, uh, yes, uh, Juma Prabhuji. Krishna. Yes, Krishna. Lord Krishna, in this text, text uh, I have seen that he's looking for humility. The one, uh, the, the, a devotee who will follow everything that he says without ask, without asking why are you telling me this no 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 the in the text it is written therefore intelligent persons avoiding useless argument and speculation should accept what is stated so in short what i'm trying to say is that lord krishna is trying to look for humility the a devotee who will follow everything that he says the instruction that he says do this do this Hare krishna 
thank you for making that point Hare Krishna okay we hand over to Prabhuji we haven't left you a lot of time Prabhuji but you can extend the time Hare Krishna Hare Krishna uh, so yeah we can start with Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So yeah, we have got, um, actually before I start, we've got presence of uh, my mentor, Mukundari Prabhu. So hopefully if there is any complicated questions, uh, then Mukundari Prabhu there is to, there to hold my hand and uh, he's my mentor. So yeah. Um, and also I think there's Sanjay as well, Sanjay Pandari. Uh, he's also my colleague, mentee. Yeah. So, um, so both are there so to hold my hand. Um, so before we start, actually, just to remind uh, of um, the first the three verses um, before, so five uh, translation. And whoever at the end of life quits the, uh, his body remembering me alone at once attains my nature. Of, of this, there is no doubt. Actually, this Antakale Chamayam Eva, the verse is repeated quite a lot by Prabhupada in his various lectures. So this is quite a key verse, yeah? So people should remember this verse. In even the next words, which is yam yam vapi, smaran bhavan, tijati ante kalevaram, tam tam evaiti konteya, sada tad bhava bhavita. Uh, so whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, or son of Kunti, that state will remain without fail. Then after that, Tasmat Sarveshu Kaleshu Mam Anupsmarya Yudhyacha. Mai Arpita Mano Buddhi Mam Evya Shashi Ama Asam Sayaha. So therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna. Yeah, so this is important. You should always think of me in the form of Krishna. And at the same time, carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. Without your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. Okay, so this is very important for this one. And then we went on um, um, the yesterday's one was where he who meditates on me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me undeviated from the, from the path, he, O Partha, is sure to reach me. So in this actually verse, the, the, I just want to, um, you know, when we, when we chant this verse, which is quite long, the meter is slightly different for this one, yeah? So it's not a, like a usual meter. So when we chant this verse, so we slightly, make it different so it's it's easier to to get the mantra right so because it's slightly wrong long so we do uh, kavim puranam anushashitaram anor aniyam sam anusmaradyam sarvasya dhataram achinta rupam aditya varnam tamasa parastat so because it's a long long verse the meter has to be slightly different. So I haven't practiced it myself, but I'm just trying to say this is how, um, you know, if, if it's a long verse, the meter is slightly different. So one should meditate upon the Supreme Personality as the one who knows everything, as he is the oldest, who is the controller, who is the smaller than the smallest, who is the maintainer of everything, who is beyond all material conception, who is inconceivable and who is, who is always a person. He is luminous like, like the sun and he is transcendental and beyond this material nature. So I was just listening to a class uh, yesterday actually on this one. Um, it was a short class. So I'll just give you the brief information from that class. So 
previously to this, we had Krishna uh, informing us that um, in our next birth, whatever state of mind we have, that's how it will attain, yeah? So uh, Krishna recommends that we think of him, okay? So he recommends that we always think of him. So we should know, uh, we, because we are thinking, we should, we should know how he is like, yeah? So it is very difficult to meditate or think without knowing the qualities of the Lord. Because you need to know the qualities of the Lord. Because if you have, you have to think of him, you need to. So there was other, there's other thing. We, we always think Namom Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishtaya, Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Itinamine. Then, then there, is, there is the thing about uh, Advaita, yeah? Uh, Advaita Vadi. So Shunya Vadi and Adhyatya Vadi. So Adhyatya Vadi and, uh, are, are also called uh, Nirvishesha Vadi. They are that, 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 that they, are, they maintain that the Supreme has no qualities, yeah? It is very difficult to think of someone without any qualities, yeah? So sometimes Adhyatya Vati says, you meditate on a Sagun. First, they, this, is, this was said. They, you meditate on Sagur, which is the actual uh, form of the Lord, then, then meditate on Nirgun. Yeah? They say bhakti is the key to understand, but the theory actually kills, kills bhakti. So Advaita Vadis apparently promote bhakti, but pure devotees strongly oppose Adhyata Vadis. Yeah? It is question of understanding the true bhakti. So bhakti of Advaita Vadi is similar to that of Putna. So if you think of Putna, actually who, who appeared to be very favorable to Krishna as Putna appeared to be very lovingly to Krishna initially, but her, her ultimate purpose was to kill Krishna. Yeah? Similarly, Adyata Vadi claimed that absolute truth has no qualities. So where is the bhakti when you want to reject the object of bhakti? Yeah? So, so the, the thing is, so the referring to this verse, there are few verses actually, which are Krishna is repeatedly saying um, that actually he is the supreme and he is the uh, you know maintainer. And, and and the key verse actually is on the uh, chatur uh, shloki. Uh, I mentioned that before. So it's if you if you go to ten eight, actually ten eight to ten eleven is the Chatur uh, Shloki. And um, in that, um, 10 a says, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Mata Sarvam Parvartate Iti Matva Bhajantema Buddha Bhava Samanvita. So that is a key verse, those 10, 8 to 10, 11, are the key verses, this Chaturviti, Chatur Shloki. So translation of that is, I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. So this is actually the key verse, 10.8, yeah? Um, and other, other verse, which this one uh, that was, I was trying to refer to is 18.65, which is um, the verse actually I, I, I tried to quote when um, um, Prabhuji, uh, uh, Shamananda Prabhu was given the class. So that is Manmana Bhavamad Bhakto Madhyaji Mam Namaskuru Mam Evyashi Satyam Te Patijane Priyosime. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, and offer me your homage and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. So this is very important verse, which is actually more or less similar to this verse, but at least giving you slightly more, you know. So as, as we progress, we'll see uh, Bhagavad Gita actually refers to quite a lot of repetition and Krishna is actually reminding us every now and then that actually this is this is key point actually bhakti bhakti is the key point so 
then it's something become it, it, then it's uh, uh, you know like I I going on to um, to the story of um, Putna. Then it becomes something like love of someone who wants to get something from someone. Yeah. So when you when you try to get something from someone, that is like a, you know it's not actual love because you're trying to exchange something. Yeah. So in the Western world, it is uncommon for an attractive woman to attract a rich man. Then she marries him and she, she, accu she accu accumulates wealth and then she divorces him, takes away all his money, yeah? So her love was just to, sh to show that it wasn't love at all, yeah? So do we actually want to love Krishna like that? You know, just go for material things and then after we get something, uh, we just don't love him. Yeah. So, so Mahaprabhu actually shows us what is the real love. So if you remember um, in uh, Shishtakam, it says, Nadanam Najanam na Sundarim Kavitam Vajagat Kamaye Mama Janmani Janmani Shware Bhavatat Bhakti Ahi Tuki Tvai. So I don't, I don't desire anything, you know, the beauty, the wealth, uh, Everything, anything. Uh, I no, I have no other person there. Well, I will only want, you know, you. And um, then at the, at the end at the, of the Shishtakam, Ashli Shia Vapa, the Ratam I don't know whether you remember that um, verse, but you can make me broken hearted, you are long load of my life, life after life. Yeah. So that's what it says. I don't know whether you want me to recite the whole thing or or not but um, this is what it is yeah so if if people can go through the shishtakam uh, fully the eight verses and read the translation they are really beautiful translation yeah so he is worshipped by his pure devotees so krishna is worshipped because of the because of qualities, actually, we love him. Yeah, he, re he, re he reciprocates with his pure devotees, and devotee love Lord for the exchange of love rather than opulence. So there was a saying that why do we approach? You know, there are three ways people approach Krishna. One is uh, we want to exchange something. We, we want uh, we want something in return. Yeah, I am giving you ten pounds. You can give me thousand pounds. Yeah, so that sort of bartering system. Yeah, then the other one is, is we approach Krishna because we fear. Yeah, what will happen to me? What will happen to me when I die? Yeah, well, so that's the other, 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 other part of it. So, and the final part is actually pure uh, loving devotional service to the Lord. So you, whatever you do to me, like I say, Mama Janma, you know, um, in, in the Shishtastakam, whatever you do to me, I, I'm, I'm ready. So even if you bring me back to this world or you take me to the hell, Krishna, it's up to you. Yeah. So that is, that is actual pure love. You don't want anything, but just pure love to Krishna. So he reprocrisis with his pure, pure devotees. Devotees love Lord for exchange of love rather than opulence. Here his opulence is mentioned. He's, he's a, a board of all opulence. So in this slok, his, his opulence is mentioned. Like um, he's also other names. He's uh, Srinath, Sridhara, yeah? Sriniketa, yeah? But that is all his opulence sort of name, yeah? So, but he's above all, he's Madhurya actually. So there are four qualities of Krishna that differs from Narayan form. Yeah, four special qualities. So first is Prema Madhurya. So Prema Madhurya is exchange of pastimes of love with his devotees. Yeah, so Prema Madhurya. Then the second one is Rupa Madhurya. Yeah, his extraordinary beauty, yeah, is, is Rupa Madhurya. Then, um, then is the Venu Madhurya, yeah? Opulence of his flute. You know, when he blows his flute, you know, everyone starts dancing. You know, all the gopis, all the birds, everyone starts dancing. 
Then other one is Lila Madhuryam. He's extraordinary pastimes, he's Lila. So devotees of Nairani obviously love him, but not to the extent of Brajavasi, yeah? So their love is uh, with slight uh, sankochana or hesitation, yeah? Um, so that is a start, you know, with the Narayan form. Then actually the ultimate form, well, ultimate thing is Prema. And uh, I don't know, I, do you remember last time I mentioned the stages of Bhakti and I also sent you the stages of Bhakti. And that is the stage of Prema we want to, we want to aim to get to. Yeah? So Rindam pastimes are like a hidden pastimes and he's the Supreme Lord. That means he's the person. He, he likes to play joke, etc. Yeah, so Krishna in Vrindavan, he was like joking, you know, as a coward boy. Uh, so that is the thing. He was like a friend. You know, you don't, people didn't treat him like a Lord. But he was like a, a friend, you know, past time. Gopis were just treating him like a normal friend. Yeah, Yashoda Ma was just treating him like a normal, you know, child and so on. Yeah, so that is the thing. That is, uh, that is the pure love uh, that we want to get into, get to, uh, which is we are all practicing. We have not, we are not there, and um, um, it's a long, long process. So, so Bhagavad Gita actually, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu begins where Bhagavad Gita finishes, and his message was pure love of Krishna and chanting the name of Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, um, recommendation that our sadhana bhakti, we should focus on the lotus feet of Krishna instead of, of the nonsense of the material world. So we, we should focus our sadhana totally on the lotus feet. When you chant, totally focus on the lotus feet of Krishna. So where, when we are in love with Krishna, then automatically uh, think of me, him, and we will find bliss in doing so. Um, so that's my final conclusion on this. And, um, and I think um, Richa Mataji and uh, Prahlad and, uh, and uh, Juma, Ezekiel Juma, um, plus Ravi Bhai, actually gave a quite a good um, you know reflection on this um, text so it was quite good uh, that they have uh, they've gone through it um, I'll probably ask Mukundari Prabhu if I have uh, uh, missed anything uh, so he can he can probably contribute here Krishna Prabhu sorry I just put a note on the chat that I was I need to leave for another meeting. I'm already late by about three minutes, but uh, I was I was glued to to everything. I, there was amazing contribution from everybody, uh, really really amazing. I really enjoyed it, and your presentation was very very nice. So thank you so much. Uh, I just had the time today, so I logged in. I really enjoyed it. So uh, please excuse me. I need to leave now, but uh, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So you are on mute, Mataji. Sorry, Prabhuji has left, but uh, kindly ask him to join whenever he can. He yeah, can he's my mentor, and actually he's a, he's a very good speaker. Uh, uh, so we can probably ask him sometime to come. Yeah, so if he has a particular day, he would be free to come. We can, uh, it would be nice to have him constantly. Uh, at least once in a week, if he can make uh, it to our group, I will really appreciate. Yeah. Okay. Any more? Any more comments? Any more things on my correction? Any for any mistakes I've made or anything um, is welcome. Any questions? If I can't answer them, then I'll take them back and I'll answer them the you know another day, or I'll I'll put them on a the chat. Um, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. 
I just wanted to take a minute to thank you for mentoring us. I'm really grateful. Your knowledge really does help us and Danwad Pranam to you and all the due respects to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Richa. Richa, by the way, you sound young as well. How old are you? Uh, I actually just turned 17 a few months ago. Gosh, gosh, glories to you. You know, you know all the devotees were young ones and I am really pleased that actually you are taking this very much and Prahlad and yourself, you know, um, something which I, um, I, I can't say I envy because it's not envy, but it's something I'm it's, it's really grateful to hear from you. Such comments really promote us and encourage us to do so much more better in our lives. And because being a teenager, we go through a lot even in our lives. But this is something that always helps us turn around, look back, sit down and really understand that, yes, by the time we will be at your age, we will have a lot of knowledge and we will be at least somewhere close to Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Danwad Pranam. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Rita Mat uh, Richa Mataji. I call you Mataji because, uh, and that's my, people think that you are big, but I call you because you are our inspiration. Um, you and now Prahlad Prabhu. Uh, you, uh, and we can now think of becoming like you when we, in our next life, as you said, whatever you wish in this life, we want to start Krishna Conscious very early in life, uh, at least next life for me, uh, because I've just started at this age. So um, that is what I'm aspiring. So I'm trying to collect as much as I can. Yeah, uh, same me here as well. So I'm, I'm, I just want to, in my next life, I can start early like Prahlad and Rita Mataji. And even Shashwin. And Shashwin. So, yeah, Shashwin is a very good um, slok um, thing. So I, I, uh, just remember on the on the slok, yeah. If it's a long slok, then it's slightly different uh, meter. Okay. So, yeah. okay, we'll remember that, Prabhuji. This is the first time we are even touching the Bhagavad Gita, so for us, it is new. So we are really grateful when you tell us all these things. Okay, so let's unmute and chant the Maha Mantra. Everybody. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Manchakal pata rupya shya, Kripa sindhu vya eva cha, Patita nam, Aane vyo, Vaishnava vyo, Namo Namo. La Prabhupad ki? Hey. Avinash Prabhuji ki jai. jai. All Vaishnava ki jai. jai. Everyone ki jai. Hare Everyone Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Let's see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you Prabhuji for inviting your mentees. Please uh, feel free for others to join this group. No, they are in Harinam Sangha. That's why they joined. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hare Krishna. Yeah.